Hi, my name is Corbett, and I have been consulting with people across the United States on how to tune homes for scientific uh, factors like physics, chemistry, and microbiology, the practical application of which is having a healthy, comfortable home. And one of the main things that we need to explore more is ventilation. And this is something that is overthought in many circles where we get really anal about details that are maybe not as important as we think they might be. Uh, but most people don't think about it as much as they should. And this uh, video is going to be just a brief overview of what I have found as the five factors for designing and planning a healthy ventilation system. So the first thing that we need to understand is this question. This question comes up all the time and we need to be able to address it. If you are a professional, you need to be able to answer this question. And if you are uh, new to this topic, this might be your first question. And the reason that we don't just open windows anymore to depend on for ventilation is this. Uh, there are three rules for controlling your home's chemistry and microbiology. The first is don't bring bad stuff home. Second is ventilate. And the third is keep it dry. Well, opening a window will sometimes bring bad stuff into your home because windows don't have filters built into them. So the air is coming into your home unfiltered. And therefore, it's got a lot of the pollution that you find outside, pollen, grass clippings, dust from roads, traffic pollution, and noise uh, is also included in that. The list goes on. Second thing is that it's not going to ventilate all the time. If you're depending on the outdoors to ventilate like natural air leakage, then the wind has to be blowing or there has to be a temperature differential between inside and outside. And of course, the colder or hotter it gets outside, the less you will be opening your windows. And so on a very nice day, when it's the same temperature outside as inside and the sun is not shining, you will get no accidental ventilation on that day at all. So your house might be stinky sometimes and you just won't be able to control it. The third thing is, it's not gonna keep your home dry all the time because of course, sometimes it rains or the fog rolls in or whatever happens. So. Humidity control is one of the main features of a healthy home, and this is something that we need to tackle. Now, when we go into the five factors, they are circulation, capture and filtration, humidity control, dilution air, and pressure relief. And by the way, if you want to know more about how to actually implement the things that I'm about to talk about, to just gloss over in this quick video, um, and see case studies, and really start thinking about how to use these factors to uh, plan out different homes or your own home, then I have a ventilation course that's available at buildingperformanceworkshop.com. It's linked below, and that should be enough to satisfy almost anybody. It's a very high nerd level while also being very practically applicable. So let's dig into these. First of all, circulation is the first thing. Now, we have already thought about the four elements of home performance. we got heat bleed, airflow and pressure, moisture, and air quality. So all these five factors, I'm assuming you are also then applying to those four elements. And V is just part of HVAC. The ventilation is in the middle of HVAC, but we also have heating and air conditioning. And that's why we do things like a manual J calculation. And I'm linking a video on screen now about how to do a proper heating and cooling load calculation. So that's all handled. This is all extra, <laughs> extra credit if you want health, if health is extra credit. Circulation means how are we going to get this air that we are uh, having be healthy air around into all of the different spaces in the house that we might have. And so the common answer is let's have a central duct system. This is a super highway that we're building in the house and we can use it to deliver all kinds of different things that are among these five factors. If you are not planning to have a central duct system, and many people are deciding for things like whole home ductless mini splits, or even ducted mini splits, essentially a decentralized system, or alternatively using radiant heat because we want our toes to be toasty in the wintertime. And then what are we gonna do about circulating the air in the wintertime? Because now we're not using the ducted system that we have for the summertime because you can't radiant cool in most cases, then we, we just have something that we need to think about. So this is an important thing to just consider. Now, second factor begins with capture. Uh, capture just means grabbing pollution where it starts within the home. The most obvious place here on, on the left where my daughter is standing is next to a toilet. A lot of people call bathroom exhaust fans 
fart fans. And when I say a lot of people, I mean, generally a lot of people who are in the building industry, don't let them call it that because that is not what it's for. But exhausting odors around toilets is an important thing. You can see our exhaust is actually located next to the toilet itself. And that's for specific reasons that I'm linking on screen now, if you want to go <laughs> look at that video as well. Really, a bath exhaust is for exhausting shower steam. And you can see that in the second picture here, the exhaust is in the shower. That is the only correct place to put a bath exhaust fan in a bathroom that has a shower. Here you can see the kitchen exhaust in our forever home uh, that we built ourselves. And you can see a whole bunch of videos about that on our YouTube channel as well and on the Home Diagnosis television series. And that is the single most important thing for having a healthy home. You've got to get those cooking pollutions out of the house. And when we talk about cooking pollutants, we're talking about particles, we're talking about chemicals, and, and microbes are a part of the soup that we're swimming in in homes. Those don't come from cooking as much. In fact, cooking probably kills a lot of those. But now we've got their dead little corpses floating around to, to worry about too. And the last thing in line here is radon. And that is something you definitely want to be considering as you're talking about exhausting pollutants where they start. Uh, by the way, don't trust the radon map you find online. Now, when you in, want to increase capture, you can use two things to do this with. Broadly speaking, you can use fan power, which is what Grace is pointing to here on the left. You can have a 2000 CFM kitchen exhaust to it if you really want to, or you could use geometry, which is the other piece of the puzzle. And that's on the right, where you can actually nestle a fan that's a much lower power into a corner so that it has to draw air from only two places. And that will definitely encourage the air that's on the cooktop to go out, which is where you want it to go. So if you put the cooktop on an island, you have to use fan power because there's no other way to do it. You have totally screwed up the geometry of your kitchen at that point. So you can use either or. Generally, both is a good idea. The second part of factor two is filtration, which is basically capturing the pollutants in the home. And the idea is you take your filter and you throw it away and you put a new one in. And that is a very important thing to remember to do. So make sure to remind your family uh, in this holiday season that that's important. Filtration is the only way to absolutely ensure you're going to have a healthier home. Anything that is electronic in nature, including UV lights, including blue lights, including bipolar ionization, including electronic air cleaning, including spraying disinfectants into the air, introduces a ton of chemistry into the air, which means chemical reactions that you cannot predict. And we know this because we've interviewed tons of chemistry researchers for home diagnosis on PBS. And we know that they don't even know how to predict that. And therefore, none of the companies that make those things know how to do it. And also, they don't actually do what they're advertised to do. These are great ways to do that. You can use a pleated filter, and those are generally going to be much better for the fan performance. So a fan and a filter, that's what you want. Now, when we go up the list, it's important to go back and revisit the things that are further down on the list. So when we're talking about capture and filtration, we want to revisit how we're going to circulate this air that we have now filtered. Humidity control is factor three. Now, humidity control goes for uh, wintertime, which is typically more dry months, and for summertime, which is typically more wet months. But you don't want it to be too wet or too dry because you can see in this chart here that there are dangers at both ends for human health. Now, when we do either humidification or dehumidification, and in tighter and tighter homes, when you build a home higher performance, you're actually going to cross a line where you have to worry more about this because you don't have the diffuse circulation of air leakage throughout the house in all the gaps and cracks. Now we're bringing air in in a very specific place, which we're going to get to next, just blasting it into the house through one duct. And that's the dilution air piece. Now, before we get there, we got to revisit humidity control. We got to go back down and we got to see how we're going to circulate this humidity control that we're doing and how we're going to filter it. Next is dilution air. And this is the second part. Cleaning the air inside of a home is mostly you should rely on filtering it. But then you should use the more expensive kind of air cleaning, which is diluting it with outdoor air. This is more expensive for energy bills, literally expensive. It's more expensive for comfort, for humidity control, for pollutants, because you're bringing in outside air and you could basically replace all the air inside your house several times a day 
in most of these schemes that you would use to target uh, an airflow for dilution air. There are four different methods for doing this. There's exhaust only, supply only. There's a mix of the two where you use something like a bath fan and something like a duct into the return side of your air handler. And then there's the last thing, which is really only for very tight homes, which is balanced uh, ventilation with an energy recovery core. Now, again, how, we got to revisit. So if you're going to figure out this out, you got to revisit down. How do you, you're going to circulate this dilution air? How are you going to filter it? How are you going to humidity control it? And, and by the way, that is the piece that differentiates between an ERV and an HRV. And the last factor, of course, is pressure relief. And this is something that is incredibly important for very airtight homes, but it's generally only really important for very airtight homes because a lot of other homes are just going to get pressure relief naturally through things like uh, gaps and cracks in the enclosure. Now, that can be very dangerous if your gaps and cracks happen to go to things like a garage that's attached to the house, then you're in, you might be in big trouble. So think about that too. But you've got two different methods for pressure relief, passive or active. The passive is just a hole in the wall that opens up when it needs to. You can see that on the left in our tiny lab, which is our tiny house on wheels. On the right, you can see it, what an active makeup air system looks like. That is the Fantech makeup air system or MUAS. Um, any of those solutions, and I know of exactly two that are off the shelf in the United States of America, are going to cost you thousands of dollars. On the left, $200 max. On the right, $3,000 on, on average. And that's just equipment. Um, so considering how you're going to do this is important and you want to be able to use a couple of websites. And I have a, a video that I'm linking on screen now to figure out how to size your pressure relief um, for your uh, exhaust, your one-way exhaust. So again, now we need to revisit. How are we going to circulate this pressure relieved air? How are we going to uh, filter it? How are we going to humidity control it? And is it going to interfere with or maybe augment our dilution air? If you live in a family like, for example, that's Indian or Pakistani and you cook all day long, you have this makeup air coming in. It is going to be essentially dilution air at some point. Are we going to use that for something? So uh, please do study more about this. Come study with me in my ventilation course. Look up more online. I'm hoping there's going to be more and more stuff about this online. We are putting this topic on television and your neighbors, your family members, your clients if you're a professional, are learning about this on PBS on our television show. Highly recommend that you watch the show yourself so that you can know what it is that normal people are seeing. And by the way, thank you to all of the companies uh, and our Patreon supporters who help make that show possible. I hope that you'll add things below if you have questions or comments. Of course, we're going to try and keep on pumping out videos. You can see that I'm making this over uh, Zoom on my computer right now, and I'm just trying like crazy to make more time to both help my clients and consult for them and do manual J's and do ventilation designs and also make these videos. Um, and these are the people that help support that work. So thank you very much to all of them. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe. Tune in next time.